Hey, I'm Jess Pryles from Hardcore Carnivore, and I'm a live fire cook and a meat expert. It was absolutely a visit to Texas that changed everything. It's easy to fall in love with how barbecue tastes, and it's easy to get obsessed uh, about finding that next perfect bite of brisket. But I was just fascinated by its role in Texas culture and also the, the complicated way in which it was made. You know, the time, low and slow, a lot of effort, it's real craft. As I started to get more interested in meat and trying to just find out more about it, I ended up going to a butcher shop near my house. And the really cool part about a lot of Australian butchers is they're real mum and pup joints that still get in whole carcasses. So he would tell me to come in on a Monday when the store would be closed but they would get a delivery and I would watch them, you know, take sides of beef apart. And then when I would come back to Texas, I would kind of stage or overnight with pit masters here and everyone was just really willing to share and show and just be really generous with their skill. As I started to go along in the meat journey, for me, I realized that I was becoming a real advocate and I just wanted to learn more and more. Uh, and I would start just reaching out to people. It was really organic. I would kind of befriend people on Twitter, people who were in the media industry back in Australia. Through that, I've met so many amazing people who are just always willing to share with you and help me learn, which then helps other people learn because the more I can learn about cooking and meat and cuts and things that I just totally nerd out about, the better it is for other people to feel the confidence to cook in their own homes. Once I started learning about meat and once I figured out that cooking meat and cooking steaks was nowhere near as difficult or as challenging as what I had thought that it was, it was just really liberating because I never thought that I would be able to do it or I, it was just always too hard or someone had said, oh, it's seven minutes each side and someone else has another theory. And you know, meat's expensive, so a lot of people don't like to experiment with it. So when I realized that it wasn't at all as difficult as what I had assumed it was and then shared that with other people, that was a really big moment. I started Hardcore Carnivore because I had all of these recipes available to people on my website and I thought, look, I'm not opening a restaurant. How do I get people to taste what I think meat should be seasoned like? Once I had put it out and people really started to like it, I sat back and went, oh, this is great. And then about a year in, a buddy said to me, he's like, you know, you have to put out more now. Like people like what you're putting out. They like the flavor of things. It was 100% driven by, I think this tastes really good and other people might too. And so it was kind of just like a passion project. And now, you know, five years later, there's five seasonings in the line and gloves and paper and tools for meat enthusiasts because it came from a place of passion where I just kept adding to everything. So I don't know that I've ever had a game plan, but I've always been really driven. That's been really important to me, just being hungry for more and do the next thing and achieve and experience as well. I wanted to go through a more formal meat education. I found Iowa State had a graduate certificate program, which you could do online. And I kind of became obsessed with the idea of furthering education. The more that I can share with people that's accurate, the more it makes me a valuable resource instead of just being a person on the internet or being another website. Learning is just, you know, a hunger for knowledge because the more you understand about things, the more it unlocks doors for you. So getting excited to learn more about barbecue unlocked more of the secrets of cooking barbecue. And in learning more about meat, I unlocked a whole world of how to choose it and how to cook it. I've always felt a sense of duty to still disseminate correct information. So it matters to me that my recipes work. And it matters to me when I tell you about meat science or meat safety that I'm being accurate. It just has to relate back to people's real life situations. Meat is really challenging for a lot of people because if you haven't done anatomy and if you're not a butcher, it doesn't make sense that there's more than one way to butcher an animal. And the biggest mistake that a lot of people make is that 
the things that a lot of meat cuts are named are really challenging. So some things are called a steak, but they might not be best cooked as a steak. You know, so it's important to understand that this cut needs to be braised, and this cut is gonna be great for low and slow cooking, or even if you can't low and slow it, if you cut it real thin, uh, it's gonna be tender and edible. To be able to tell someone else, this is how you pick the best ribeye out of all of them, in the case, you know, look for this muscle because it's the best one on the whole animal. Uh, that's a lot of fun. And it's also a lot of fun walking up to a meat case and knowing exactly what you're looking at. You know, instead of like a blackboard full of figures and numbers and it's like all comes together in a magical sum for you. So that, that's a pretty neat feeling. Really.